Sir Jim Ratcliffe to beat for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes reacts to Ronaldo's exit out of Manchester United. And then we are going to talk about Roy Keane and his reaction to the Glazers putting United as the available team for sale. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from guys? If you have not yet subscribed to what we call Rokani Media Football, then you are missing out on all the exciting World Cup match reactions from Rokan David. So if at all you really want to know what the World Cup is all about, go and put in the word Rokani Media Football. After putting in Rokani Media Football, obviously you are going to get that YouTube channel and we put there match reactions and other stories concerning other teams if at all you really want to know. But today has been a very exciting day. We've started off with Morocco drawing with Croatia, another shocker coming in through. Then the other game that really saw us get excited about was that of Germany being beaten by Japan by two goals to one. And Spain have just annihilated a team which goes by the names of Costa Rica by seven goals to nil. And right now, Belgium is playing Canada. And if I told you a Manchester United fan, you must be watching this game of football. Put a lot of eyes onto Benjamin sorry, Jonathan David. When you watch J Jonathan David, you'll either come up with your conclusion whether Ten Hag should go in and sign him or not. Because most of us believe that he is really one of those signings that Ten Hag should go in for. And as we are really searching in for the replacement of Cristiano Ronaldo, then you should expect such things to come into the making like Jonathan David. So all eyes on Jonathan David. I'm watching that game of football here. And obviously in the first 10 minutes of the game, Afonso Alves missed a penalty and Fibo Cotua saved it. That is the second penalty saved in this World Cup. The first one was saved was saved when Poland was playing which team? When they, I think was Poland beaten? I think Poland was beaten and Lewandowski failed to put that goal in the back of them. I think they are playing Mexico. Not so. They are playing Mexico but I think they drew. I think they drew 0-0. Zero, zero. So they failed to score but obviously the second penalty of Afonso Alves has been saved but obviously all eyes on Jonathan David. That's why I'm really watching this game and I'm, I'm recording this video while I'm really watching that game. So I'm serving two months as a goal. For anything that doesn't go in favor of how you want it to be presented I'm sorry because Jonathan David is really one of those players that I'm really putting my eye on to you. That, now we all know that yesterday United issued a statement that Ronaldo has exited or quit United under mutual consent and obviously a statement was issued. Now Bruno Fernandes who appeared today in a press conference when he was really talking about the game they are going to play against Ghana obviously had lots of things to say about Cristiano Ronaldo and amongst those that he put out were Ronaldo didn't tell me about his decision to leave Manchester United it's a personal decision and it concerns him and his family. We haven't talked about it Everyone here is focused on the goal, national team, and the World Cup. So when you look at how Bruno is really talking about Ronaldo, it shows you that he wanted him to leave. He wanted him to leave because there are things that Ronaldo was doing at the field of play and people don't believe that they should be really uttered out. But I know after he leaves, most of these things are really going to go out and uttered. How, what he did at the club, how he used to behave a person we knew that is one of the best professionals in the world but the club told him please pack your bags and go because of what he really did and you really breached the contract at that uncensored show of Piers Morgan obviously Bruno continued to let us know that Ronaldo didn't tell me about his decision it's a decision all right he said it was a dream come true to play with Cristiano Ronaldo, but nothing lasts forever. That is Bruno Fernandes. So nothing lasts forever. But I believe most players that really came in at Manchester United had a problem with Ronaldo. Sorry, that Ronaldo phone at Manchester United. Do you know why? When Ronaldo was, was not here, United was really doing a very fantastic job. Not so. You can also agree with me on that because by the time he came in through, United had gone ahead to be the finish second into the Premier League. Then he comes in through, we finish fifth. And there is that Ronaldo syndrome that affects a team that people don't want to even talk about. It's believed and shown statistically every time Ronaldo Cristiano comes to a team, there is the way the number of goals that people are supposed to be scoring really cut. And then Ronaldo just takes off the day. And I've seen it at Manchester United. 
players like Anthony because they really believe in Cristiano Ronaldo a lot. Whenever they get that ball, they are just looking at Cristiano Ronaldo and where he is, looking for him to go out and pass that ball to him. So there is that syndrome that they respect him a lot. Obviously, he worked for it. But my worry is that Ronaldo is not scoring goals. You saw him in very many games when he couldn't really score sitters. So I believe it's time for him. He quitted United and Bruno Fernandes says it was his dream come true for him to play with Cristiano Ronaldo. And remember, on his return to Manchester United, on his return to Manchester United, Sosha told us that... Um, Bruno has been chatting with Ronaldo Cristiano via WhatsApp and telling him of what the situation was at Manchester United. So, I believe lots of things happened between Ronaldo. He brought a lot of joy to us and obviously he failed himself. I don't believe the United team failed him. Ronaldo failed himself. Why did he fail himself? If he was scoring in goals, trust me, he wouldn't have gone anywhere. Because he came out and really told us that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was a good coach. He was a good coach, based on being, he was giving him every game. But when Ragni came in through and really started benching him in big games, Ronaldo found it hard. When Ten Hag comes came in through, he also benched him. So it shows you what Ronaldo really needs. Ronaldo is that player who really wants to be playing every game and teams that are really going to sign him should know that this is a player that wants to be playing every game. With his ego, let's wait and see what is going to be his next, his next club after the World Cup and he needs to go out and prove himself in the World Cup starting tomorrow when they are playing against Ghana because Ghana is really not an easy side but I know they can annihilate it with the front force they are really having Joao Felix, Ronaldo Cristiano, Bruno Fernandes and Bernardo Silva they can really cause havoc to a team which goes by names of Ghana but with the shocks we've seen in the World Cup everything is now possible everything is now possible if you don't utilize your chances then you are deemed to failure or to be beaten like Germany and Argentina. And you saw how Croatia today was shocked by a team which goes by the names of Morocco. Now we are having breaking news. Sir Jim Ratcliffe will bid for Manchester United after the Glazers formally put the club on the market. So the news is already out and Sir Jim Ratcliffe is waiting for the Glazers to say that United is up for sale. But my worry is the Glazers want... 8 billion pounds Sir Jim Ratcliffe's net worth is close to 16 is close to 16 billion pounds is he willing to let out 8 billion pounds of his wealth to invest it in Manchester United I doubt now we've been told that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is very sorry is worried about overpaying for United as insiders suggest that the Glazers are looking for a price in excess of 5 billion that is Tom Morgan he's a sports news correspondent for the Telegraph obviously when you look at what they're really telling you about this player who sorry about the owners of Manchester United the Glazers they want in excess of 5 billion shillings <laughs> that's it but if you want in excess of 5 billion shillings, you know that you are locking out other people, contenders. And that's what the Glazers really want. I believe the Glazers already have a buyer. They already have a buyer. That's why I did a story, I think, like two, three hours ago when Thomas Donker came out and told us that United wouldn't have gone out public that they want to sell the club. If at all, they never had a viable buyer to get them the amount of money they want. I think they really... They really did a, an independent audit, all research, and they got auditors, they made research, and banks made, made researches and approached rich people, and they valued Manchester United. And obviously, the artistic was set at Chelsea. Chelsea is nowhere near Manchester United, but if at all they sold it at £5 billion, pounds, then United should go... United should go for more than that because it's a more more famous club with lots of fans all over the world that we really buy in merchandise and really make you strong. One will say Chelsea had a debt of 1.5 of 1.5 billion dollars from Abramovich. That's why they added that amount of money to make it five, meaning that the realistic evaluation was three out of 3.5 billion. But even if it's 3.5 billion, you can't tell me that United should go for five. That means United should go for like six or seven. And I think the Glazers are right on that. 
and people are going to come out and buy the club of Manchester United. They are going to come out and dish out that money to Manchester United and obviously everything is going to go on well for a club which goes by Manchester United provided a very huge billionaire with lots of money comes in through to reinvest in this club especially when you are getting into the general transfer window and if it's acted quickly as it's being told, as we are being told that the club is really going to go on and be sold before even Christmas, then that will be better. Reason being, for general transfer window, that means money will be available. Reason being, every person who buys the club comes in with an ambition of impressing the fans and buying very many players that the manager needs. In other words, we call it he backs the manager a hundred percent. Now, Telegraph Donka who goes by James Telegraph, correspondent of United for the Telegraph, and obviously Tom Morgan, who also works for the Telegraph. They told us that sources close to Sir Jim Ratcliffe says he always puts business logic before passion. Now, we know that he is the re ideal person who would love to buy Manchester United because he supports United to an extent that even he wanted to go on and buy Chelsea, but Chelsea was cheaper. Was cheaper. But him getting close to 80 billion pounds out of his money he needs to go on and really th rethink after rethinking then he will make up his decision on what he's really going to go on and make that's why they're telling us that he fronts business logic before all more than passion now we've been told again about sir jim ratcliffe and buying manchester united that jim ratcliffe's renewed interest in buying united is said to be serious Enois, that is his company, has a rule when launching takeovers that they expect investments to pay off or increase significantly in value after three years. And obviously, I think when you tell me that they increase value in three years, I believe the United needs owners who are really going to come in through and put in money for like the next six, ten years when they're expecting nothing in return. That's when United can really get or regain value and compete at the world level and obviously get in trophies that are going to get United money and more fame. That's it. But right now, you can tell me that he's looking at three years. That's really, that's really bad. And this is where I come in through and say, no, I don't agree. I don't agree with Sajim Ratcliffe now taking United because if he's looking in for a payoff of in three years, that's out. That's out. We need a person with close to 12 billion pounds, pay off like seven or eight with the glazers, clear off the debt with that money. Then he has like, he remains with like five billion billion pounds to spend in Manchester United, build a new stadium worth close to half a million pound. You get improve the services, get in quality players at Manchester United and obviously see how money is going to get back to him because the Glazers have been making have been getting have been making profits when the team is not performing very well now imagine how it's going to be if at all United is really winning games and winning trophies winning the Premier League the Champions League and being competitive and sitting down the likes of Man City Arsenal Liverpool and Real Madrid of this world how can we not make money that we are really we are really expectant about and what really helps you to make money? It's always simple. Being active and really winning. When you win, everything will go on as planned. But if Otto Ratcliffe is looking at three years, three years pay off. Oh my God. I surrender. I surrender. He's not the right person for the job. That's it. He's not the right person for the job. And I really surrender and I don't want that. I don't want that. We need the person who's going to come in here, invest for like 10 years. Like you saw what they did at Chelsea. They told Tony Boyle and his consortium that you are only going to start getting dividends out of the Chelsea Chelsea incomings after 10 years. Meaning that Tony Boyle is going to invest for 10 years without getting a single coin out of that club. But imagine how much money will he be getting from Chelsea after investing big in Chelsea. That means... Chelsea will have a lot of money on its account. The club will be safe. And obviously, that's what we would want United to be treated like. And that's why you saw that the United, the Manchester United Supporters Trust, have really come out and really said, we need to be involved into this. The fans need to be having a say 
into this and obviously do the needful as needed by the club. Now, still talking about the Glazers who are still in ownership of Manchester United. We've been told Roy Keane has really come out and said the following about the Glazers putting United on sale. Formerly to me, he was formerly the captain of United until 2005-2006 season. Then he left after falling out with Ferguson when he came when he went on a, when he went on Manchester United TV and really put out an interview selecting all the players and other people at the club. Now he's telling us that that's good news for United fans. Again, the last few years they've wanted the owners out. There has been no relationship. They're business people, so it's good news for the fans and. I like to see it when these obbies come out and really go hard at people like the Glazers. And this is like sending a message to the new people try to come in, trying to come in and buy United. They will know that if you come out when you want to get dividends out of this club, you are going to get slated by even the obbies of United. So I want to see the likes of Keane, Gary Neville, who have been at this calling out to the Glazers for a very long time going all out there and being vocal again and putting these owners on pressure because they have the platforms to let them know that you have to include the ex-players you have to include the fans that's when you're really going to be having a well rain club at Manchester United thank you guys for watching in rock and David is my name I want to see your reactions on the following topics Jimmy Ratcliffe set to bid for Manchester United obviously Bruno Fernandes reacts to Ronaldo's departure obviously obviously Roy Keane has has also came out and reacted on to the news that came out of the Glazers have put United up for sale thank you guys for watching in Rokan David is my name I love you guys and keep it Rokan keep it United Matters channel I hand you over to you my lord and I believe we might get we might get another story in late in the night. I think like three or four hours from now, I might return and let you know about Jordan Sancho and where he's training him from. Is it Eric Ten Hag that has sent him to train in Holland? I'm returning with that Jordan Sancho story, working hard to dislodge Alejandro Ganacho out of his position. I'm out.